So, uh, there are a number of strategies that can help um, mitigate some of these um, less than great moods, the mood states that sometimes descend upon one this time of the year. And I wanted to, last night I was doing a little bit of a literature search in response to um, Robin's suggestions that um, I think she doesn't think that I take it to heart, but I really do. And so I've made a little list. Um, and I'll, let me just quickly go through them. First of all, <clears throat> let's discuss um, exercise itself. Well, it turns out that exercise is um, a very uh, potent antidepressant in many ways. Uh, basically, they compared it to uh, Zoloft um, or Zoloft and exercise. These are people at Duke and then followed them up and they found that you know Zoloft doing nothing and exercise and Zoloft and exercise all seem to work. Most people aren't depressed after four and a half months which is good to think but um, the people who exercised seemed to do much better than the other groups um, maybe even better than the uh, exercise and antidepressant groups. Okay, so continue to exercise. Two, uh, let me just see what's next on my list. Uh, all right, now this one was a little bit counterintuitive, but some researchers at the University of Kentucky found that, let me make sure this is in the frame, that Tylenol is um, actually um, may help improve the um, socially rejected uh, hurt feelings type person. And what they found is that there's a, a psychological inventory called the hurt feelings score. And it sounds kind of funny, but uh, you know it's a it's well validated, and that they put people on a thousand to two thousand milligrams per day of Tylenol uh, or a placebo. Followed them up, and the um, people whose um, hurt feelings were treated with the active uh, acidic acetaminophen drug actually not only uh, reported being in a better mood but then later um, some fMRI brain scanning um, seemed to indicate positive changes in the uh, brain act activity all right so any normally I wouldn't be taking this stuff but since my um, little jabby bone, the medial epicondyle is screwed up. I decided to yeah, take, take a couple of these a couple times a day for the media, medial epi, epicondyle and who knows, maybe it'll help the mood. Alright, the next one is um, the old chestnut about smiling. When you go like this, you know, the kind of rictus of joy that people like me, there's all kinds of, oh God, I kind of look like the Grinch who stole Christmas, but anyhow, um, it causes these, a whole bunch of different muscles to send feedback to the brain, which interprets you it, it, it interprets you being in a good mood um, simply because of smiling. Whereas frowning, or my, in my case, the constant flat affect, which is kind of like this. Someone will say, Merry Christmas, how do you like your present? I'll go. Um, that sends signals to your brain that perhaps your mood's not that great. 
So they came up to test this. They came up with a pencil test. It's a different kind of pencil test. In this one, if you hold the pencil in your mouth like this, and then they do fMRI or some kind of PET scan or whatever they do for your brain, they find the person's mood is a little bit down. However, if you hold the pencil in your mouth like this, you get a little bit of a mood elevation. Um, so that's something to consider this time of darkness and despair. Just All right, moving on to the fourth one. And this one actually is pretty important. Uh, it's on a, a depressive rumination. Now, rumination comes from the Latin word for... Um, you know, chewing your cud, which certain animals like cows and stuff have a couple different stomachs. They'll eat the grass. This could be wrong. This is my interpretation. They'll eat the grass, they'll swallow it, they'll vomit it back up and eat it again and swallow it again. And then the different stomachs start to go to, to work on it. But they, they found that people who are natural ruminators, especially when they get into a kind of depressive rumination cycle, um, tend to kind of get stuck there. And so the strategies that they have found to help this is anything that can kind of break your going over and over and over the same depressing topics. And so they, they said, like, just anything to distract yourself from it. Now, when I took my class in Nuts and Sluts in 1973 at the University of Michigan, the idea was that if you were sad or upset about something and you tried to bury it by not thinking about it, that that was just um, a recipe for repression and it would just go deep within you and fester and get even worse. Like, like the cuds that don't get vomited back up or just festering and you need to bring it back up and chew it some more and then swallow it again and bring it back up and chew it some more the cow dies. That was the old Freudian kind of theory. But the new theory is that if you don't think about it, it's not going to bother you and it's not going to fester or get worse or anything. Now, I'm not saying to just completely ignore it. However, if you can um, bring yourself uh, to a point of distraction. And so in my case, I decided I've always felt kind of guilty for not reading more um, really long Russian novels. So I think that from now, when I'm just going to start carrying the brothers Karamazov around with me. And if I find myself ruminating about being in a bad mood, I am just going to open it up and read. Um, let's see, there was one more item. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, the, and, a good, another w good way to distract yourself is to watch something charming. And I hope that you will consider watching my twin brother's charming movie. In the meantime, or re-watch this one too if you want. But meantime, I've got a little bit of reading to do. Merry Christmas.